<laughs> hey, West Ave, hey, Monday, starting off, we are whittling down the final weeks of school as we head forward um, into continuing learning and to continue, um, thank you so much parents, you guys doing amazing things of, of teaching day in and day out, um, helping students continue their learning and continuing education as we kind of pass that, <laughs> literally, pass the torch on to you guys and you guys um, continue to do so well so many students still um, getting work done still getting work accomplished still learning and I encourage you even into the summer the same thing to continue to learn to continue to um, to read and to write and use math and and all different things and skills of science and social studies of, of so many things even um, electives and hobbies and things that you guys enjoy um, whether it be sports or music or instruments or um, art or um, uh, or languages or it could be anything of whatever you're interested in of, of, um, of you know mechanics or or carpentry or whatever I mean the uh, the uh, the list goes on of so many things um, that you students and parents can be involved in continuing to learn, continuing to enjoy learning, and again, improving, um, bettering ourselves and our families as we go, um, as we continue to go through this. So, hey, um, you know, I, I so encourage many, many parents back, or at least getting back to work, many more businesses opening of uh, Texas, um, many different things going on and getting out and about, and I don't know if you had a chance to get out. Um, our, ours did. We were we were just antsy to um, n not to stimulate the economy, but that was a plus. But to also just to uh, to be able to take the children out uh, for a little bit and uh, to get uh, some things that, of course, as always, it happens. Um, you know, <laughs> over the course of the past two months, our kids have grown out of many of their clothes and shoes and and uh, had to get uh, new things and try things on um, and so we're still looking for things so we're still uh, trying to help um, uh, trying to get those things covered so as we go so uh, week five so week five of, of parents as teachers teachers as parents you are the best educators and so we start off um, of course we, we said uh, of structuring uh, making sure you structure your environment for learning um, or structuring your family for success and then we said um, to teach and teaching those expectations and what that looks like and how we do those things and um, and then observe and you see um, what they've learned and try to make sure uh, if there's things that need to be tweaked or or, or fixed or or uh, adapted or um, changed to um, to reteach or whether it need to be um, uh, to be uh, uh, something different a trial and error something new um, and then of course last week increasing positive interactions or trying to uh, trying to have more positive things um, as a family of trying to invest this into our family and so increasing po positive interactions. So the C of stoic, all of this spells stoic. So I've done it week by week, S-T-O-I-C. And another thing that we adapt as teachers is actually uh, correction. Or we say the C is correct fluently. That's what it actually stands for. So correct fluently. And we say calm and consistent. Um, it has to be respectful, it has to be uh, regular, and it has to be um, definitely as you correct and reprimand and you uh, redirect or whatever it might be for students um, in the classroom as teachers or at your house. Um, but that entire list, stoic, um, literally as it comes to a conclusion of, of correct fluently, uh, respectful and calmly and consistently that that has to be a regular norm. If you if you um, go back um, weeks ago, as I told you uh, of of things that I do um, that I, I shared uh, weeks ago about um, about how um, I discipline and that how I've learned of, of of parents and other 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 parents that I've talked to and things um, of disciplining. And so I tell you when I talk about that discipline or or spanking with the spoon aspect so you knowing your why and, and why you do it that's what teachers do um, but for me that spoon helps me that stoic posture helps me to be um, consistent and respectful and calm um, and when I say go get a spoon it's not 
uh, the old uh, Mr. Knox or me myself as a parent of in rage and anger and getting upset with my child who's making mistakes and learning, um, but actually it's now helping me to be that stoic face of go get a spoon. That you know, timeouts can be not just for 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 students or for children, but also for adults. A timeout for us to calm down. Um, man, I. Over this past weekend, uh, I've been short. My words have been rude. I've had to apologize to my daughters um, because uh, a picture frame got broken when I was outside uh, getting some work done. And then um, come back in and, and the, you know, my oldest daughter, she even struggled to tell me the truth. And, um, and so I, I actually, <laughs> she had, she sent a uh, middle daughter in. And so I said, go get, go get Addison, my oldest. Um, go get her, please. She came out, stood there for the longest time, um, as I'm still working in the yard and doing some things. And um, and so I, I said, "Do you have something you need to tell me?" And uh, she was so, you know, of course, disheveled and upset with herself, and also worried about my response. And Dad, I broke um, I broke a picture frame, and this. And she described the picture, and this and that, and this and that. And I said, "All right." Um, I said, "Hey, does Dad make mistakes?" She said, "Yeah." <laughs> I said, uh, do you forgive dad? She says, yeah. I said, so what do you think it's gonna be for me? I said, am I gonna forgive you? She said, yeah. I said, yeah, I am gonna forgive you. Uh, that we make mistakes. Um, but actually that stoic posture of, um, of being approachable, of being calm and consistent of those things, um, allowing them to talk, uh, to be able to verbalize things, that uh, mistakes that they've made. Of course, we all want that as parents. We all want that as, as they grow into teenage years, into adulthood, um, that we'd like to be an open book. We'd like them to be an open book, to share um, with their mistakes instead of hiding or lying or trying to cover things up. Um, but when I say that consistency of, of, of doing it calmly, when I say go get a spoon to my daughter's, then they know what it is. They get upset, but I get to remain the same. Or as they go and get that spoon, then that helps me to remain calm. Um, that, uh, you know, do you know why? You get, it's a whole conversation that I go through. Do you understand why? Um, do you know why uh, you're getting spanked? And what's the reason behind it? And they explain those things, and we go through the whole, um, the whole example I gave um, weeks ago. But I also want to show you what I do in the classroom and as a teacher, as an educator, of, of how that came about, um, of, of an example that was pretty, uh, pretty, uh, just it made a huge impact on my teaching, but also um, in the, uh, uh, in, uh, in what happened with a young man in my class. And so, um, so a young man, he actually was diagnosed autistic. Um, he had uh, diagnosed uh, so many other different things, uh, uh, um, just, uh, just uh, was he autistic? May or may not be, um, but definitely uh, was allowed to uh, to be rude and be verbal about it uh, many different times. Um, it's almost, and I'm I'm not saying anything about um, diagnos diagnostics or anything. Um, uh, in my behavior uh, on the on the side of things, I have to, to to walk a tight line between the special ed side versus the the regular child side, and what that looks like, and and families going through different things, and whether students all need to be diagnosed or not. Um, you know, I I tend to disagree with it. I'll be honest. Um, of whether students are all ADHD or all defiant, uh, yes, we all have bits of pieces of it all. I mean, um, you know, did I go on medicine as a child? No. Was I defiant? Oh heck yeah. Was I off the walls? Yes, sir, I was. Um, all those things. But I didn't have this medicine, uh, Ritalin, whatever other medications it might have been, um, diagnostics, whatever. And it not, it didn't become a crutch. And I'm not saying that other people do that. Um, some people may or may not, um, but I walk this tight rope on this behavior side of people going um, this sped route to diagnose. And, you know, even I've talked with some parents before and I've had conversations on the phone where people have said, oh, you know, there's a diagnosis, right? And I, I just, I hate that. I'll be honest. Um, I hate that crutch that people say um, while well, they're diagnosed. Because I believe um, that children, um, if they have structure and accountability and love and care and uh, discipline and, um, uh, uh, and, and, and uh, 
positive uh, engagement and, and just um, and just those experiences that I believe that it can overcome a lot of things. But then whenever we neglect, whenever we um, don't have those things in place, then yes, um, then yes, things could could become a problem. And and students are so smart; they pick up on so much. Um, I tell you, even uh, we have a student at our school that's one of the greatest manipulators. Um, that I've ever seen that if you do not carefully watch every single word out of your mouth then this young man will use it against you and it becomes this um, well you said this and then you have to think back and remember um, whether you did or not and he hangs on every word and manipulates it towards what he wants and it becomes this constant battle between who's right and who's wrong and who's in control because he is looking to do that um, in his grade level and he's growing into a larger a bigger older problem um, unfortunately uh, so but back to the student that I taught um, so he would constantly share his opinion amidst my class in the health classroom as I would teach um, and then someone like it was it was notorious for whenever a student made a comment or um, I engaged the class and asked them questions and they would say something and then he would blurt out over the top of the class well you're stupid you're dumb you um, you're an idiot like he was just constant just I mean it was it became this and I got to day in and day out look at him over and over and over again I said uh, that is disrespect you will not call out of my class and you know what um, uh, some days I would battle it uh, until I couldn't battle it anymore and I would kick him out of my class I said go in the hallway think about what you said of how rude and disrespectful you are son because uh, this cannot happen day in and day out. and you know and it's a, a terrible habit that he had gotten accustomed to over and over and over again but he would um, just now was he a bright kid sure he was but he would constantly put down other students for what they've said and, and calling people stupid and dumb and I would have to ride him to the bank day in and day out I would pray so much Lord help me all the time as I went into my as he came in my second period class and um, he would come in every day and I would just uh, Lord give me patience with this young man um, to correct him over and over again um, because he cannot do this and I'd spoken with parents before and then they would tell me oh this you know this uh, is a di you know diagnosis blah 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 freaking blah and it became um, you know medicine blah 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 no 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 your son cannot um, make fun of other students and he's a bully and he's acting that way and if you allow that then that continues to happen and so you have to put your foot down like I said at the beginning you have to intersect head it off you have to do something um, and if you don't then it becomes a bigger issue and so I would constantly tell him over and over again that it was wrong inappropriate rude disrespectful um, and then uh, after after the after the second time he do it in my class that same time then he would be gone and I couldn't allow him to stay because he could not treat people as different. And what's hysterical was that the, that he would write these journal entries. And so then I got to pull him out of class after, after class was over. And I'd hold him back. And I said, son, you write day in and day out on your papers to be treated equally. But you don't treat people equally. How can that be? You diagnosed, you disability, what, whatever it may be, but you, deep down, your heart, son, he wrote it on the page constantly in a journal entries that he would turn in, that he would like to be seen as equal. And I said, well, sir, you have got to start treating people as equal. And you don't. And I'm going to tell you by God's grace, as that year went on, and then I got to actually, I got to sub at the high school as a long-term sub. I got to see him the next year, and that kid came up um, out of nowhere. I kid you, out of nowhere. He came up to me um, in my classroom. I was running ISS from a credit recovery classroom. And he came up to me and said, Mr. Knox, you had the greatest impact on my life. Um, you're one of my favorite teachers, um, and I really respect you, and I appreciate you helping me with um, with being kind to other people and he told me that just one time 
on my own time as a teacher at the high school, he came back, Mr. Knox, you made the greatest impact on me. And all I did was just hold him to a line of, of what was right and wrong. Corrected him fluently or just regularly, just consistently, not out of anger and upset, but just, sir, you're wrong. That's not right. You can't do that. It's rude. It's disrespectful. You wouldn't want to be treated that way. You're going to have to leave. You, you're going to have to leave. And, and I did that consistently. And by God's grace, in the high school level, um, he was turning it around. Turning it around. One thing we do as teachers, the things that you can control is how you correct fluently, consistently, even one-on-one, -on -one, uh, uh, you know, uh, privately uh, at times, uh, especially that's, you know, if you have multiple children in your house and we have multiple students that we serve and, and pulling them aside one-on-one, -on -one, correcting them one-on-one, -on -one, um, you know, as, as uh, not embarrassing students. I mean, it, it, it really does win when you get that one-on-one -on -one time. Um, but again, you have to take the time to do it. it and it has to be consistent. It is, it is going to be a daily battle. It's going to be this um, time and time again. It, it, you know, I have to be told the same thing over and over again um, sometimes until my behavior changes or until I do something. You know, I mean, as a teenager, how many tickets did we get um, of, of driving too fast over the speed limit or doing this or doing crazy things? I mean, that our children are learning and growing and that even as adults, I'm doing the same thing. Um, but we have to correct fluently. That is a structure and contributes to success. Or we as teachers, these are variables that we can manipulate and, and control. So I encourage you, so think about this. Parents, how do we correct fluently? Or who corrects us fluently? Um, or do we correct ourselves fluently? I mean, I like I said at the beginning of, of having to apologize for being so quick and rude of uh, even, <laughs> you know, right after my daughter, the, the glass broke on the, on, on, the, on the picture frame. Then all of a sudden um, we're at dinner and she spills water onto, onto me and the whole table. And I'm, ah, I jump up and I, I had to think. I had to take my own breath. I had to, 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 uh, uh, I had to uh, calm myself down, be under control, um, and realize um, that uh, His grace covers me too. Uh, hey, more on this as we go through this week. Um, but I encourage you. I encourage you. Mm, hey, because of His love. We love, we live to please him. Um, family, love is what you do. Love is what you do. I encourage you, be quick to listen, slow to speak, uh, slow to come angry. And just like that student that I got to teach um, made a big difference and impact on his life. Uh, may we be consistent uh, in loving and correcting ourselves and our children. Have a great Monday.